Right now, we'll welcome the convener of the platform. <laughs> Pastor Kwaju Oyemade for the opening address. Uh, you didn't wait. No, 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 I'm joking, but you didn't wait to greet me. All right, then. You may all be seated. Thank you very much. I said she didn't wait to greet me now. <laughs> all right. Uh, welcome to this edition of the platform. I understand that this is a different direction from the norm. Uh, many people um, had asked me about all right, the nature of this platform, and there is a reason why we have termed it um, beyond politics. The rise of a new tribe of Africans who are fighting poverty and changing the face of the continent. Now, this is not going to be a long speech, and the reason is that we are dedicating this particular edition of the platform to a certain type of people. This is a platform event, this one, that you cannot tell me that we have just brought together good talkers. We have brought here doers. All right? They are not just promising making promises about a better future. They are here to tell the stories of what they have already done. So, I will just tell two stories with two people I had an encounter with, and this is in the context of the platform, and I've entitled this very short speech, Where is your own Lazarus? Now, the first story I'm going to tell is this, and this is what really propelled me in terms of developing this concept and being confident that this concept, even though we're in a time in this nation that everything we are talking about right now is politics, and it will have been a very, very popular and fashionable thing to do to have centered this particular edition of this platform on politics. Right? There would have been a lot of drama here and entertainment. But I will tell two stories. And the first one uh, brought to me the importance of the nature of the work that the people that will be speaking in this platform, the kind of work they are doing. And this happened some years ago. We invited a woman, all right, by the name of Anne Mary Slaughter to the platform. And she was the first woman ever to hold the position of the Director of Policy Planning at the United States Department, or United States State Department. Under Secretary, right, or the, under the Secretary of State then, um, Mrs. Hillary Clinton, or Senator Hillary Clinton. So a few knowledgeable people about world affairs suggested to me, and they doubted the fact that somebody of her caliber will come into Nigeria and to come and speak at the platform, which is predominantly to come and speak at a church. Now, when she showed up at the platform and I, was, I thought about it, and it almost placed some doubt too in my mind, but she had committed that she was coming, and I knew she was. So I was... All right, curious to know why somebody of that stature right, decided to come and speak at the platform. And in a private conversation with her, she alluded to the reason why she came. She mentioned that we have always called groups of people working to change the lives of people within their community. We have always termed them NGOs which are non-governmental organizations. She said, but if you really look at it and the nature of the work that they do, it is exactly what governments should do. That the Western world has now begun to realize 
that the hope of the nations may not just rest in the hands of the politicians who hold political offices, but also small groups of people who organize themselves with the intention of bringing about a change within the, their communities. And she was saying that these kinds of groups of people are actually governmental in nature. That they understood that change comes from a citizen reformers just as much as presidents in office. People who organize themselves in answer to the needs of the community that they can actually work wonders and they can be governmental in nature. So I understood that even the Western world was now looking at those small groups of people, those individuals who are organizing themselves in that way and reaching out and saying that as an alternative even to established government, these groups of people can actually bring about the reformation and change in the nations. The second story was told me by a classmate of mine and a dear friend. We went to the same primary school and secondary school, and his name is Mr. Wale Akemi. I invited him to speak at one of our conferences earlier on in the year, and I hadn't seen him for about 25 years. And so we had a lot of catching up to do. And one major question I asked him, that why was he now working in Kenya in an area that was considered as the largest slum in Africa and probably one of the most dangerous places on the continent to work? And he told me, all right, a story of how he got involved in that nature of work. But there was something that he said. And that's why I've titled this, Where is Your Lazarus? And it struck me deeply. And he told me, he said, you know, one day I was reading the Bible. He said, and I got to the story of Lazarus and the rich man. He said, and as I was reading it, I saw that Lazarus, who was the poor man, was at the gate of this rich man every day to beg. And that the scripture recorded there, or records there, that after some time, it tells us that Lazarus died and he was taken. He said, and then the next thing the scripture said, and then the rich man died also and he was taken. And that what struck him deeply in that scripture was, the minute Lazarus who sat at the gate of this rich man who was full of salt was taken and he died, it was like God said, there is no more point for the rich man again to be on the earth. Your assignment is dead, so you also can come back home. And he said, God told him that, listen, you better find your Lazarus before your Lazarus dies. Because if your Lazarus dies, then you have no reason to be on the earth today. So the only thing I want to ask you, and the question I want to ask you today, is go and find your Lazarus. For the meaning of your life on this earth is contained in your Lazarus. Now, to this effect, because this is a practical meeting, we have decided, therefore, that as a church, we are going to sponsor the best, all right, of community projects that will be carried out by individuals who are not holding any political office just to show that you don't need to occupy a political office to bring about a change. So what we are doing is that we have opened up an email address. Now, I hope I remember this email address right. If I don't remember it correctly, they will come up and correct me, all right, when I get down. But I believe the email address is, all right, platform uh, public, no, platform community service, all right, or platform community program, where well, they'll come up and correct that. But what you should do is to write short. Now, if it's long, we are not going to read it. <laughs> the rules are it must be short, all right, because we're opening this to the whole nation. About 500 words, 
stating clearly there what you as an individual within your community that you have recognized as a need that you can effect a change in that place that will affect the lives of the people within your community. You write that 500 word essay and send it to that particular email address. There are people that are reading all those emails right from this moment forward. We will choose the best 20 and announce it at the end of the program, the 20 people that have won. Then we will call those 20 people to the office for verification, and once those projects are verified, then we will sponsor those projects. But everybody should please look for your word, Lazarus. God bless you all.